it different being the favorite now in all your fights? I have no game? idea who's the favorite. Honestly. No one's picking Chad Dawson. I'll tell you right I, now. I couldn't tell you, but go ahead. I'm telling you, no one's picking him. Let's talk to you. But everyone, you know, people used to pick against you when you're fighting Kessler. Is it different now, being you know the guy and the man? I'm not the guy. You are the guy. I'm not. <laughs> I'm really not, and that's not something I'm just telling myself either. I mean, it's you. I, I'm, I'm gonna give you a glimpse from my perspective as the athlete. You're a three to one favorite. I, I don't. I don't bet. I don't know nothing. About, I don't even know how the odds work. <laughs> I don't. Someone puts a thousand dollars on Chad. They win three thousand. Yeah. I, I, that's good. <laughs> That's a great thing. How much do they lose? Yeah. Yeah. I can tell them don't bet on Chad. That's what I can tell them. But I don't, you know, I don't, I don't look at it like that, man. I, I'm just, I'm like in another world as an athlete. My mind is just different. So I can look at something as simple as, you know, a reporter can ask me a certain question. And just that one question can fuel me. Say, man, they still don't believe it. They still don't. They still don't believe you. Of course, they have to give you a certain amount of respect when you win. But then it's the questions that come with it. Well, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about those are the things that fuel me. I'm not concerned about who's the favorite because I because I know that means nothing. I mean that means nothing in a boxing ring. So I'm I'm insulated when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I always feel like the underdog. I always feel like there's something to prove. So you have a chip on your shoulder still from going back to like fighting Kessler. Yeah. Same Andre, chip, yeah. Andre, is there a change in focus or is there more focus that the fight's in Oakland? Is there an advantage to that or how do you feel about that? That's a good thing, man. It's a good thing. It's a short ride to the arena. It's a short ride home. <laughs> <laughs> from that standpoint. But, Especially but, if you win. Yeah. You, you still, you still got to go out there and perform, man. You know, I'd probably say it's probably more pressure for the hometown fighter because, you you know, you got, you don't just have general friends. I mean, general fans and a pocket of your fans here and a pocket of his. You got fans that want to see you perform. So uh, it comes with the territory. You know, you got to have uh, a different type of focus when you fight at home, and, and, and we will have that focus. We, you know, I don't, we got to, we run a pretty tight ship when it comes to tickets and family and this and that. And, and my family and friends, they know how, how it goes uh, just from, being around me over the years, so I don't think distractions would be a problem. I'm just looking forward to putting on a tremendous show September 8th. Lord, what's your weight right now? What's I can't tell you that, but I'm right where I need to Are you ever going to move up? Or are you I would love to. Yeah, I would, I would love to, man. I, I think, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be at 68, Yeah, that's what I'm but, you know, I would love to be a multi-divisional champion here. But um, my weight is right where it needs to be. <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> you know, people, I'm just going back to what you said. People talk about fighting at home. Yeah. There's a lot more pressure fighting at home because you're still not around your family. There's still a lot of sacrifices that you're having to make being away, being here at home. Absolutely. Um, I would have loved for my family to be here today, but, you know, it's a work day. You know, um, I have to take care of my obligation to you guys. I got to, you know, strap up and go to work as soon as we're done. So uh, it's a lot of sacrifice. And I think, you know, sometimes when you fight at home, people think that, like, you're not training. You're not focused on the fight. You're just kind of kicking your feet up. But um, it's probably harder for me because my family's not far from my training camp, and I'm missing out on a lot right now. And um, but this is part of what I do. This is part of what what gets you in that, that fighter's mentality. You know, I'm not in my comfort zone right now. Uh, I'm sleeping in a bed that's not familiar to me. Um, definitely don't have silk sheets, and uh, I'm just looking forward for war. I'm in that mindset right now. Two and a half weeks out. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in that mindset to go to war. This is, this is an epic bout. I mean, uh, they're still talking about Manny Pacquiao and Mayweather, and they're kind of beating a dead horse. But this is this is the biggest bout to come along in boxing in a long time. Um, given that, uh, in the in the event that it is a great fight, um, I think you guys said you were willing to meet Chad Dawson again in a, in a rematch, if that's the case. Let's get through September 8th. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, the plan is for him not to want a rematch after right. September 8th. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the plan. So right. I haven't even thought about a rematch, to be honest. Right, right. <laughs> Very exciting. Thanks. People again. Awesome. You guys all right, okay? guys? Yeah. yeah. Let me okay. throw one more in at you. You're, you're a religious man. How, how do your religious convictions uh, play out in the ring, whether in terms of Maybe you could tap that source as an added energy to go beyond yourself, or uh, how does that work for you? Um, probably more than I can explain right now, but right. it's um, it's a lifestyle. You know, I 
know, a lot of people use the word religion, but it's a lifestyle for me. You know, I need God when I'm not in the boxing ring. I need him trying to raise my four children and you know, I need him to help me become, you know, to continue to be a good good husband. So it's a lifestyle. And uh, I lean on him every day of my life. And when I'm in a battle situation, it's no different. You know, there's days when I get up and, you know, my body's wrecked from the day before. And I'm like, you know, Lord, help me to do what I'm doing today in your strength because I don't have it. And we, somehow, some way we get through it and I give him the glory for it. So um, it's a lifestyle, you know. It's not, it's not really just a set of rules that I follow just to, you know, kind of feel good about myself. It's a lifestyle. I live this thing. And, um, again, just in, in battle and in warfare, it's no different. You know, it's no different. All right, guys. Awesome.